Good morning. How nice to see each of you here. And as we come together, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the vegetal people of the Aura Nation, and pay our respects to elders past and present and welcome all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who are with us today and welcome everyone to this session. I have just a couple of announcements you will see on the screen in a moment uh, a little bit of information about program changes. I'll assume that you've read that. I do want to announce that certificates for international students need to be picked up before lunch from the registration desk and that posters must be taken down by the end of lunch today. And then let me recognize Melinda Ginty, who will introduce our speaker. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this, our last day and final day, the 22nd Biennial World Conference. This morning, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce to you Sun Young Lee. Sun Young is an Associate Professor of the Department of Education at Seoul National University in Seoul, South Korea. Previously, she was a faculty member of the Education Department at Yonsei University and a Research Assistant Professor at Northwestern University Center for Talent Development. She's currently an Executive Editor of the Asia Pacific Education Review an associate editor of the Journal of Advanced Academics and the Korean Journal of Educational Psychology. And she is on the editorial boards of the Journal of Educational Psychology and High Ability Studies. Sun has published over 80 research articles, books and book chapters in the field of gifted and creative education. Her research interests encompass gifted students' talent development, specialised gifted programs, creativity, peer relationships, and leadership development of gifted and creative students. She received the Gifted Child Quarterly Paper of the Year Award in 2011. It gives me great pleasure to welcome today Son Yun Lee, who are presenting on Talent Dissemination, a path leading into the future of GT Education. Let's make her welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me to be one of the keynote speakers for this wonderful conference. I'm Sun Young Lee from Seoul, South Korea. I have been in Sydney four times, but this is my first time to be here at UNSW and my first time to participate in this World Council. I am so honored to be here. Before starting my presentation, I sincerely would like to thank Dr. Jennifer Jolly. Where is Jen? Okay, I cannot see her right now. Who invited me to be a keynote and all of the organizing committee members who have been working very hard to make this conference beautiful and fruitful. Thank you. Today, I'm going to talk about talent dissemination, a path I believe leading to the future gifted and talent development education. Throughout the conference, my research team of Seoul National University and I have been talking about leadership development for gifted students. And now, with this final presentation, I am happy to talk why I have been involved in and am passionate about leadership development for gifted students. Before talking about the future of gifted education, I would like to talk about gifted education in the past and today. In reviewing major topics in research, and practices in gifted education in the past and today, there are some major issues 
consistently found in the literature. First, I know you are very interested in who gifted persons are. Who is gifted person? Research has focused on understanding gifted person. Of course, definition, characteristics, identification measures, and processes are included as a major topic. Another issue has to do with understanding the nature of giftedness. When I first studied gifted education, the first question I had in mind was about the conception of giftedness. What is giftedness? It is the one most asked question for me by my students and people around me still today, as you may guess. Defining giftedness is not an easy task, and thus, models accounting for the conception of giftedness is widely accepted. It's really hard to tell in a word what giftedness is. May, okay. Maybe all of you are familiar with this examples of giftedness model. For example, the well-known Renzulli model on the left, the model included three components, right? Above average ability, creativity, and commitment. And uh, next, you may see the Tannenbar uh, STARS model consisting of five components of giftedness. General ability, specific academic aptitude, non-cognitive ability, environmental support, and chance and luck. And at the bottom, you may see the well-known Francois Ganet differentiated model of giftedness and talent. So in our field, I think it is really hard to define in a word what giftedness is, but instead, we talk about giftedness based on some component. Another important issue that has been studied a lot in the field of gifted education is about how to develop giftedness. As you may see, educational interventions and services are very um, highly mentioned. For example, grouping, programs, acceleration, enrichment, etc. But today, I feel like gifted product and performance is the most highly valued in the field of gifted education because we want to make sure that someone is gifted based on some gifted product and performance. If we cannot see it, we don't trust it, right? So visible outcomes are so important in identifying giftedness in gifted people. My name is Sun Young, and uh, my first name and last name is Lee, so I put my initial as S.Y. Lee's. My journey to gifted education, in preparing for this talk, in addition to review the previous research and topics in gifted education, I had a great opportunity to look back on my own journey to gifted and creative education. I studied psychology at college and pursue my master's degree in educational psychology because I was very interested why students would like to learn and achieve in school. My interest in school learning and motivation naturally led to the field of educational psychology with a concentration on gifted and creative education. In studying gifted ed education, I was first interested in understanding the conception of giftedness, creativity, and talent thanks to my psychology background. After learning the psychological conception of giftedness and talent, I became more interested in gifted learners and their psychological characteristics, of course, thanks to my psychology background. Particularly, I was very interested in psychological strengths of gifted students. Most of all, I was wondering if gifted students are socially and emotionally behind their non-gifted counterparts, or if gifted students lag behind psychosocially compared to their advanced cognitive ability, 
Also, I had a wonderful chance to learn about various modes of educational programs, particularly in relation to academic talent development of gifted students. So these are the issues I have been studying a lot and I have been passionate about while studying gifted and talent development education. However, there has been one issue that I have been wondering for long, and it is about the goal of gifted education. The well-known Marlon report in the 1970s identified two goals of gifted education in defining gifted students, self-actualization and social contribution. Yes, we agree that education should make learners happy and help learners to fulfill their potential ability. So do for gifted education for gifted students. However, in some nations where the government has involved heavily in gifted education, particularly with her financial support, like my country, South Korea, it seems that the goal of gifted education is more tilted toward social contributions more than self-actualization. For example, there is a big expectation of gifted students to become great resources for the nation and the world. My challenging issue is, do we have a right to expect for all gifted students to become great mathematicians and scientists? Especially in Korea, we focus on gifted giftedness in math and science because we believe that STEM areas are a good asset for the nation in the future. What about gifted students' happiness and self-actualization? What about their choice of profession? Can we force them to choose one specific domain or area over others? Still a very tough question for me to answer. Another question is, do we have a right to expect all gifted students to become great leaders for a future society? Do gifted students have to take on an obligation and responsibility to lead the nation and the world? Still, as a gifted educator, I cannot answer this question. It's still hard to get answered. So the issue is self-fulfillment for versus social contribution has been a struggling issue for me. What is the ultimate goal of gifted education? It may also vary according to cultures and nations, but I believe it will anyhow involve the issue of self and beyond the self, which is self-actualization versus social contributions, as I uh, repeatedly mentioned. Okay, the second part of my presentation is about leadership development. In thinking of the ultimate goal of gifted education, I started being more interested in leadership development for gifted students. When I studied educational programs and intervention for gifted students, I had a great chance to learn different types of specialized educational programs for gifted students. I studied the effectiveness of specialized gifted program, but mainly related to their academic and scholastic talent development. However, one program that really intrigued me was about a program that aimed to develop leadership by civic engagement for gifted students. From the start of gifted education, which was documented in the Marlon Report in 1972, leadership has been identified as one of the critical things in gifted education. Actually, the Marlon Report says that leadership is one of the domain or ability related to giftedness. Also, many research supported that gifted students have potential to become leaders because of their high interest in social issues, advanced social responsibility, 
and engage with engagement with the community and the society. Gifted students are emotionally and ethically sensitive, and they are morally advanced. However, there are some different voices as well. Yes, leadership is a multi-dimensional concept, and it is very important in gifted education. However, uh, leadership has been identified a threefold, mainly, intrapersonal, interpersonal, and hybrid. And I'm going to briefly talk about these three approaches to leadership. A number of definitions underscore intrapersonal aspect of leadership based on psychological characteristic of great leaders. While interpersonal uh, leadership highlight the process of interactions among people and problem solving and decision making in groups. And hybrid approach, as you may guess, involves both intrapersonal and interpersonal characteristic of leaders and identifies balancing both as an effective leadership. Yet, most of the conception and supported research have exclusively relying on issues about the leader's characteristics and competence in relationship with followers. One visible dirt of research has to do with cultural diversity in leadership. Leadership connotes different meanings and values by culture. For example, leadership connotes a positive tone in English such as heroic images of individuals with high ability, whereas German translation of leadership or leaders encompasses somewhat negative meaning related to dictatorship. Right? Hofstede, as I summarize here, adapted four types of cultural matters and proposed a leadership model in terms of the following. Individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, uncertainty such as accepting for or avoidance for uncertainty, and power distance, high versus low. And I'm going to briefly mention each of the components. Individualism versus collectivism identifies the degree to which one belongs to a group. When you think about the individualistic society, we often think about the West. For a collectivistic society, we think about the East, including South Korea. In an individualistic society, self-interest is centered, and privacy and personal freedom are highly valued. And we tend to think about the opposite in the collectivistic society. What about femininity and versus masculinity? Masculinity has to do with placing a great value on assertiveness and toughness. While femininity relates to building good interpersonal relationships, maintaining quality of life, and caring other people. As a female scholar, I see so many uh, smart and gifted female students, and I have been thinking about leadership for female students also, and female scholars in the field. Uh, the third issue about avoidance versus acceptance for uncertainty has to do with the tolerance for ambiguity in unstructured situations. The uncertainty avoiding society is more likely to depend on rules and regulation, while it is the opposite to the uncertainty accepting society. Then lastly, power distance, high versus low power distance, refers to the distance between the leader and his or her followers and the level of authority given by a person in power. For example, people in high power distance society place a great value on social hierarchy, while those in a low power distance respect horizontal and consulting relationships and are eager to participate in the process of decision making. So there are so many components that we have to consider in understanding leadership according to a different social cultural context. Okay, 
Leadership contains so many uh, issues, and it is, of course, a multidimensional concept. And yet, there are some issues involved in leadership in association with gifted students. We have some myths about leadership and leadership development. The first issue is, we still wonder whether leadership is inborn or developed, or both. And also, we have a conception or perception that leadership is not for gifted students. It is for non-gifted students, probably more, okay? And leadership doesn't have to do with giftedness. And the second myth about gifted student is their social and emotional strengths, including myself. We often think that gifted students are not socially and emotionally advanced as much as their cognitive ability. They lag like behind socially and emotionally uh, non-gifted uh, counterpart. Another issue is we don't have an efficient leadership program, especially in a school setting. So lack of efficient leadership program for gifted students is a very major issue. But positively and thankfully, my research showed that an efficient leadership program can be a good outlet to make use of gifted student giftedness for others and society, which is very inspiring. From now on, I'm gonna show you some results from my study about leadership development involving gifted students and teachers. Luckily, I got a three-year grant from the National Foundation of Research in South Korea with a goal to develop an educational program and service enhancing leadership potential of gifted students. As part of this grant study, my research team examined how gifted students and teachers perceive leadership and characters of future leaders in a global society. And if they believe that gifted students more than non-gifted students have a greater potential to become future leaders in the world. First one is about gifted student perception about their own leadership. We included 300 gifted students and 300, uh, 302 non-gifted students in the study and asked how confident they were in their leadership potential. As you may see from the graph, gifted students were very confident in their leadership potential. Overwhelmingly, gifted students believe that they have a fair, good, and or excellent level of leadership. And you will say that compared to the non-gifted student, they have a high confidence. We also ask about how they perceive about their leadership type. The majority of the gifted students identify their leadership type as a high adaptator and a low innovator. As you may guess from the meaning of the adaptation and innovation, adaptators are those who are compliant, conventional, adapting, redefining, transacting, and replicating. While innovators are reforming, radical, unconventional, transforming, and more creative, Interestingly, there were a larger number of non-gifted students than gifted students who identified their leadership to be both high in adaptation and innovation. As you may see from the graph, gifted students perceived their leadership to be an adaptive type more than the non-gifted counterparts. While non-gifted students more than gifted students perceive their leadership to be innovative. I think this result was quite interesting given that creativity is so important nationwide and across the uh, world, and innovation is so close to creativity. And still, gifted student does not have confidence in creativity. We also ask how they perceive their own leadership skills. As you may see again, gifted students were more positive than non-gifted students in rating each of the leadership skills, such as 
responsibility, problem-solving skills, communication skills, planning an organization, and goal-setting. They are at least rated highly compared to their non-gifted counterpart. I included gifted high school students. Just want to make sure. OK. What about the teachers who taught gifted students? Our study shows that communication skill on top were the most important characteristic for future leaders that the teachers expected. Followed by morality, responsibility, caring other people, problem solving skill, collaboration, and other. It seems that psychosocial characteristics more than the cognitive ability were considered by the teacher as crucial for leaders in a future society. So, except problem solving skills, most of the skills are related to psychosocial characteristics. I think it is interesting to find communi communication skills as number one because uh, recently in Korea, it was a very big issue for the leader because um, someone did not communicate well. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think it's very important to be open-minded and communicate uh, appropriately. Again, okay, let's move to the factors improving leadership. There were differences between gifted students and teachers in addressing the factors leading to and improving leadership. Having psychological support and motivation, such as support from group work, motivation, and support from other people, were referred to as important factors improving leadership by the student. While the teachers, more than students express having a role model and good leadership program were the factors improving leadership. I think it is imp inspiring to some extent because teachers believe that it is important to have a good program and a good role model to improve leadership for gifted students. But students have different feeling, right? We have 75 teachers who have a very um, great experience teaching gifted students in high school. As for the uh, expectation, whether having a higher expectation for gifted students to become leaders in the future, positively more than half of gifted teachers believe that gifted students have a greater possibility to become leaders than the non-gifted uh, counterpart. As you may see from this pie graph, 56% said probably, 9% definitely, 7% definitely not, 13% probably not, 15% like so-so, like neutral. But still, you know, more than half of the teachers said uh, positively. We also asked about reason for gifted students to become leaders. Reason had to do with cognitive ability, particularly advanced problem solving skill, and also expected expertise for gifted students. Moral responsibility, advanced social skills, and interest in social issue were addressed the least. Advanced social skills and interest in social issue were mentioned even less by the teachers than by the student. So as you may guess from the result, you, we can still say that, oh, teacher did not have a high expectation of gifted student having advanced social skills and their interest in social issues. But they really value highly their advanced cognitive abilities. What about this? Reason for gifted student not to become good leaders in the future? Surprisingly, the teacher also mentioned lack of ability as the main reason. Hmm. Consistently, the teacher referred to poor social skills and lack of interest in social issues as weaknesses of gifted students that discourage them from being a good leaders in the future. Interestingly, gifted students responded 
lack of moral responsibility and common sense as major reason that prevented them from becoming good leaders. <coughs> See? Again, teacher may not be very confident in understanding or you know, assuring that gifted students are like socially advanced and they are interested in social issues. Okay, I did briefly uh, share some results from my uh, study, but uh, my study is ongoing, and actually we collected data using the Korean gifted, non-gifted, and gifted teachers, and now we are in the process of collecting data from the U.S. So we are going to compare the, uh, U.S. sample and Korean sample because, as I mentioned uh, previously, we have to think about social and cultural context in understanding the conception of leadership and leaders' features, and hopefully I will have a chance to share more in the future. So, lesson learned from this study. My study was quite positive in that. Both gifted students and teacher felt positive about gifted students being leaders in the future. Both believe that gifted students are able to become great leaders because of their advanced problem-solving skills and expected expertise in the future. In particular, strengths of gifted students were found in problem-solving ability and adaptation, but not in innovation. So we have to think about the issue of creativity along with this matter. However, teachers perceive the importance of interpersonal skills, such as communication skills, morality, responsibility, and caring other people, right? And they refer to, however, they refer to intrapersonal abilities such as advanced cognitive skill and problem-solving skills as strengths of the gifted. So we now found some conflicted perception from teachers. When referring to the ideal leaders, they refer to interpersonal characteristics. However, they perceive the strengths of gifted students based on their cognitive ability, not their interpersonal characteristics, which is quite interesting and need to think about in educating leadership for gifted students. Teachers were ambivalent, show ambivalent feeling toward gifted students' leaderships. They were high expectations of and also concerned about gifted students' abilities. Okay. They refer to their ability as number one issue for a reason to become leaders in the future, but at the same time, they refer to ability as a reason not to become future leader for gifted students. Students and teachers differ in their perception about factors improving leadership. As I mentioned before, teachers reveal a strong belief in education and developing leadership, which is quite inspiring while students emphasize psychological support from others and their own motivation. So students should be motivated first, okay, before having some program or having a role model. So we really have to understand the needs of gifted students and the expectation of gifted teachers as well. Okay, the next part is future ahead. Talent dissemination through leadership study. Now let's talk about the future for gifted education. I did briefly introduce what my research team at Seoul National University have been doing over the past year. My new journey to the leadership study has to do with my belief in talent dissemination for gifted students. Before talking about the issue of talent dissemination, let's briefly review about the underlying ideas of talent development. From the 1990s, a number of researchers and scholars have proposed talent development and suggested replacing gifted education with talent development education. It is not just renaming gifted education by calling a different name but it contains the very important issues in educating gifted students. First, 
it suggests that giftedness is a developmental concept. It is not a static or fixed concept, but it can be developed. Second part is continuous intervention and services are needed for gifted to be a talent. And the model assumes individual differences, of course, according to the domain. Some domain, we could see the gifted potential earlier than other domains, like music and dancing and like in PE area, but in math and science, maybe later. Many models assume that giftedness is a potential, while talent is the developed giftedness, which is an outcome. And lastly, giftedness has to do with a child, while talent has to do with an adult. Even though we interchangeably use giftedness and talent, but there are some models, like a Ghanaian model, that differentiated giftedness from talent. These are the basic ideas of talent development. I am an ardent supporter of talent development and talent development education. However, it still does not give me a clear idea about a clear message for the goal of gifted education because it has focused on the issue of the development of giftedness and of course, before development of giftedness, identifying giftedness and development of giftedness, and, but not talent development after wars. What is next? Why is talent development so important in gifted education? For what? This is the issue, as I mentioned, I have been struggling with a lot. I personally suggest that gifted educators must be aware of the importance of moving beyond talent development and pursue the issue of talent dissemination, which is about sharing giftedness and talent with others and for the good of the society. And leadership development will and can play a major role to make this happen. Leadership, I believe, is a form of giftedness and is an asset of gifted student. My preliminary research showed that, thankfully, gifted students and teachers believe that gifted students would be good leaders and better leaders for the society. Of course, there are challenging issues that we have to resolve first, and educating leadership is really needed also. The reason I am passionate about leadership development is in that it gives me some ideas about the ultimate goal of gifted education, balancing self-actualization, self-fulfillment, and social contribution, the issue I have been struggling with to figure out. For leadership to be instrumental to talent dissemination for gifted students, we have to have a different mindset and belief in leadership. First, leadership is a form of giftedness. It is a strength of gifted student. It is developmental, it is educational, it can be teached, it can be taught, and it can be learned. It is a value-laden concept. It contains the values and vary by culture and the nation. So we really have to understand a specific social cultural context in understanding leadership, and expecting for future leaders. With this leadership mindset, I have been pondering often the nature of leadership. In the review of literature and my study on leadership, I identify four skills that need to be developed for gifted students as future potential leaders. I call them Global competence, competence Skills, I plus 3C. I, Intelligence, 3 C are Creativity, Character, Good Character, and Communication. Again, these are the skills I believe needed for global leaders 
including gifted students who have great potential to become leaders in the future. I'm going to introduce briefly the component of global competitive skills that I would also like to call gifted leadership. Of the many soft skills involved in each ability and or characteristic, I, with my research team at Seoul National University, included only a few major core abilities that I believe important in identifying intelligence, creativity, character, and communication. For example, in intelligence, basic cognitive abilities such as short and long-term memory, reasoning ability, mathematical problem-solving skill, and spatial and perceptual ability, and language skills are included. Creativity consists of creative characteristics such as curiosity, risk-taking, and unconventional thinking. Creative thinking such as taking diverse perspective and holistic thinking is very important also. And I also included idea generation and remote association skill as a very core abilities in creativity. The third component, character, is about a good character, having a good character, has to do with understanding, moderating, and controlling emotion, and having good interpersonal ability and ethical problem-solving skills. Lastly, communication is the one I am very interested in, and I think it's very important for the global world. It's about selling one's own strengths and compensating for one's weaknesses by communicating efficiently. These are the four skills I believe needed for the global leaders in the future. Okay, it's about the time, I guess, to wrap up. A path to future GNT education. About 20 years ago, I started my doctoral stud study on gifted education in the US. Of course, it has been a great journey for me to learn about giftedness and fell in love with gifted student, gifted education, and talent development. Personally, for the next 15 years of my profession, I would like to devote myself to finding a way to share the outcomes of the developed giftedness and talent with other people, communities, and bigger society. I know that my journey to gifted education will be continued with passion and a greater passion. And I believe one mode to make good use of the talent development of gifted students is in leadership development. Using the global competence skills inventory I am now developing, my goal is to identify core global skill, which is gifted leadership among gifted students. Leadership development is, of course, not a new agenda for educators and scholars in the field, but it has been dismissed for a long time. I want to suggest strongly that it's time to think about disseminating giftedness and talent and not merely identifying gifted person, gifted student, and developing their giftedness and talent. A path to future gifted education and talent development should be in talent dissemination through leadership development. This will help to realize the goal of gifted education, balancing self-actualization and social contribution. There is always a love and hatred on gifted education. If we realize both goals of gifted education, self-fulfillment, and social contribution, I think people will love gifted education ardently. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a few moments for questions, and um, Sun Young has kindly agreed to answer a few questions. So, is there anyone who'd like to ask a question today?
It is huge. Would you like to repeat the question? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for asking. What is your name, please? No ways. No okay. Uh, she asked. I mentioned the different perception between gifted teachers and students. Like teachers perceive the importance of programs, and students mentioned like psychological support and having their own motivation. Um, she asked whether the difference came from uh, a student um, perceived differently about the leadership programs. That can be a very possible, you know, the answer. But um, my belief, and I think that students do, student do not feel that like um, having a great program is number one issue. They have to be motivated first whether they want to be, they want to take some leadership roles. Because some gifted students do not want to take leadership roles, so they just do not want to be our leaders because they are gifted students. Uh, in Korea especially, when you are very academically gifted, there is some high expectation around the student that you have to do something okay, in the future. So I feel like students are kind of resistant that, oh, having a good program does not really guarantee like developing my leadership, program, leadership potential, but they want to make sure that they love to do it. So I think um, it may come uh, it is not about the perception, different perception about program, but it is about their own uh, preference and belief in leadership. Okay, thank you. What is name, your name, please? My name is Temps. Temps. Okay. Um, he mentioned that like uh, gifted students who are introverted and intuitive may have uh, like potential to become leaders, but uh, we have the perception that maybe extroversion really play a big role. But I have to tell you that among Korean gifted students, the majority uh, are introverted. They are not extroverted, which is different from the study uh, conducted in the Western world. So uh, the reason I did include the communication skill is many Korean students, and of course it is not only for Korean students, but many gifted students, even though they know something, they do not know how to sell it efficiently. They look kind of awkward because they don't know how to communicate well with other people. So I think it, it is related to interpersonal ability also. So communication does not mean that like having an introverted like tendency, but I mean that you really have to sell your strengths efficiently with other people and convince your things you know, um, strongly to other people so that your giftedness can be developed and sold and shared with other people and the community. But I will definitely take your advice and include it for my future research. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much to Sonia and to Sonia. Thank you. Thank you. That's just a small group at the university.